We do ring around the rosy here, man. <laughs> so, there's some folks that met everybody. This is Gigi. Gigi, and that's Vern, and that's Kitty, and that's Richard, and that's Robert, Robert <laughs> and that's Richard and Robert. <laughs> I'm highly medicated. I, <laughs> that's who I am. And John, and Sean, and Pat, and Nathan, and Jim, also known as James, <laughs> Brad, Prentice, Courtney, Highly medicated. So, and that's Glenn over there. And Glenn normally would be bowing with us, but yeah, ring around the Rosa Kioske Ray. Thank you very much. And bravo. So, welcome. Friday morning. Um, we're going to do uh, uh, the weapons work from uh, Koro Dairoku and a particular take on it. Uh, I just wanted to say an opening remark before I turn it over to Sean and to uh, Courtney, uh, who will be doing the actual presentation. We. I started working on this, oh, what, six months ago, a year ago, somewhere in there, and looking at it and um, looking for a coherent theme. And the thing that I had jumped on to was um, I'd noticed that if you look at uh, some of the work that's displayed by Mr. Tomiki himself, uh, when you see elements of this kata put on film, um, you see variants of disarmament going on. And looking at that, at how he would like take the guy's knife arm out to the side of him and then you see the same kind of thing in Koro Daisan, the, the, the lower level high kata, if you will, um, where you just sort of do an arm bar and you take the knife away. No big deal. In this kata he gets the same arm bar but now he's like kneeling on top of it and he's kicking the knife out of the guy's hand with his heel. I'm like, well, obviously, this is a more obstreperous knife-holding person, you know. He's having to go to fairly extraordinary lengths to, to disarm the guys. It's, you're dealing with a different kind of uke on these variant forms, is what I started to get the inkling in my head. And so, we approached it that way with the, uh, the, the attacker, the uke, um, working from a, a semi-resistive or almost a passive-aggressive stance where, well, you just can't do that to me. We've heard that before. Well, you just can't do that to me, you know. Which is not, uh, strictly speaking, super realistic for somebody who's actually attacking in the real world. It's more of a, a, a psychology that gets into things typically around a, some sort of competitive model. But since the uh, large part of Tomiki Okido did sort of drift into that competitive model, then yeah, it makes a lot of sense that you develop a lot of ukes with that sort of, hey, you can't score the point on me while I'm trying to do the thing to you. And so it, it has its own logic to it that way. And I would just like to say that even though we're working on a set of technical issues surrounding uh, uke being, uh, oh, quasi-resistive, or Howard likes to say he's just, just kind of being a dick, you know. <laughs> Mildly dickish to majorly dickish, somewhere in that range. While we're dealing with techniques designed around uh, messing that guy up in cold-blooded ways, um, it doesn't demand that you actually get highly dickish to do it. In fact, if you do, the impact and, the, and the, the, the rest of the technique gets tougher on you. And it's probably not wise, at least while you're learning, to engage it that way entirely. Um, uh, rest assured that uh, between the three of us, we've done a lot of the being dickish with each other to prove to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys can really be mean, I mean, and, and they say the same about me, um, uh, <laughs> screwing you up. So I think they have some really interesting approaches with it and some good things to say. And uh, at that, I'm going to turn it over to Courtney first and then Sean, you back her up and we'll go from there, right? Okay. Let me put the, uh, well, Courtney's being very um, modest, but she's a real old timer. And old, old timer. She... Uh, started in the old, old days and recently got a promotion that she's shy about. But anyway, Courtney, please. 
Well, and Sean, it's really us together, right? There we go. I guess we need knives. There we go. I shall grab a kniffy. A kniffy. As far as shooting. Uh, yes, where should? Yeah. Just don't get over here. Be okay. Up there, and you're fine. Okay. So here. Good. All right. There are the. Uh, Weapons for Roku Kata are divided into four sets. There are five defensive knives, then five, I guess we say offensive. We're holding the knife. Four, it has the knife. Yeah. And then there are four swords and four, where you're holding the Joe, you don't treat it like a Joe, but you hold it that way. And so we're going to try for the knives, at least get through as many as we can mm -hmm. today. So these first five, he's attacking, and four of the attacks are somewhat similar, correct? Overhead, just kind of an overhead. Two, couple and, of pokies. And then a pokey, yeah. So the first attack is overhead, and the name of it is Ariminagi. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you've all done Ariminagi. The idea, though, is to be appreciative of the fact that the man has a knife. So as he comes in, as he gets about there, you step to the side for a Rimi Nagi. Now, right here, you want to be sure you have an arm bar because he has a knife, <laughs> right? And you take him around or wherever he's, when he steps, as he comes up, you come into him being sure that you keep that knife away from you. Then you do the Rimi Nagi. As he goes down, you can then get a hold of the knife hand. It's probably not a good idea to have the knife um, holding it as he goes down. And then if you turn toward him, you can take the knife away against his finger. How about now I attack you and you give us your take on that. Um, I, I think of the, the first one we've all done in the walk, this opposite hand, opposite foot kind of motion, I think of that first entry step of the same way as he's coming in this, turn this way. And uh, like she said, keeping this trap to my thigh. Also keeping just a little bit of weight on the shoulder. You, in some kind, you might even see them grab <laughs> the back of the collar. And when they raise up, you can give it a little extra juice on them. You know, at least just a little bit of weight to give them a, a sense of pressure and then when you let off of that weight and they stand that reaction becomes a little bit more exaggerated so as they're falling down we're going to just gonna let this hand slide to the arm hand i'm going to pass it now, I want to talk just a second about dead. Let go, please. <laughs> what hand is built? Right. Well, thank you. Not long enough to keep the fingers clenched once you get to a certain point. You bend it over and the fingers just kind of pop open. And like she's just talking about peeling against the fingers, the weakest finger being the, the pinky. Right. So, yeah, we'll do it a time or two more. Repetition. You can peel it off. Yeah. And I'll jump on her. Mm -hmm. um, Results may vary. 